All right, on this episode of Bouks Talking Bouts, excited to be talking to an individual set to compete at BYB 15 Broward Brawl, and that transpires on February the 3rd. We have Cody Jenkins getting out there, taking on Joshua Oxendine, and should be a great one in the mighty Trigon, and good having Joshua on the show for the first time. How's everything going, man? Everything's great, man. Um, I can't complain. Um, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to get on here. Oh, no, it's fun getting to talk to you, man. You've been doing some good stuff as of late, but something I wanted to touch on right from the jump is just the change in opposition here. Like, you were supposed to fight Jeremiah Potts, and he ended up having to withdraw from the fight and everything. Like, was it a pretty smooth adaptation, kind of switching opponents there, or were there certain, I guess, stylistic amendments you had to, you know, put out there, like, change things up, maybe? Yeah, yeah, I had to change just a little bit, just because uh, Potts is a, a boxer, but, um, um, Jenkins is more of a, a Muay Thai guy, like so he keeps his hands a different way than most boxers. So just trying to adjust to that. But I fought Cody before. Um, I beat him. I'm in MMA, so I'm nothing to it. I'm just gonna go in there and do what I do, man, and then hopefully get the same result. Yeah, I was gonna say you guys do have a certain history that dates back to about a couple years ago, actually, like pretty close, January thirtieth, twenty twenty one. I'm seeing, and I also understand you were helping him backstage for his first bare knuckle fight there. So this is kind of like a cool instance of you guys having like a good friendly rapport with each other, but just kind of realizing it's a sport at the end of the day and like, let's go out there and do it. Yeah, he's, um, he's a good guy, man. Cody Jenkins, he's, he's a, he's a good dude. Um, you know, a family man, a, a husband, a father, um, just like me, man. So he's just, he's going to handle his business just like I'm going to. And, uh, we're going to go put on a war, and then we're going to shake hands afterwards, man. Um, no hard feelings or nothing. We just got a job to do, and I'm uh, I'm going to do my job just a little bit better. And good to start the year off so soon. I, I would think it would lend itself to having a good strength of schedule this year, possibly, because it seems like last year very much had that for you. Like, you were talking about finishing the year 3-0 and in boxing and bare knuckle. Like, how will you, how will you assess, like, 2022 overall like what are your thoughts on like your output that year because it seemed like a strong one yeah it, it was it was pretty good standing up on a feet um i can't really complain too much um you know i, I went undefeated in, in boxing and bare knuckles so i don't think you can get much better than that unless you add some uh some more wins to it so that's the goal in 2023 um try to go six to seven no this year um in boxing and bare knuckle um so yeah, we're looking forward to it. Can't wait. We'll start off right February, and then shoot, I might, I might jump in March, and then May, and keep it rolling. Yeah, and definitely some you know chances to do so. Being that I saw you signed the multi fight deal with BYB recently, so that's huge too. Yeah, um, I told them they they should have signed me to an eight fight deal because I'm about to I'm about to finish that four really quick. So um, hopefully, I finish Jenkins pretty fast, um, like I did the last one, and uh, we can keep moving. Yeah, for sure. And then just kind of touching on the last fight a little bit too, just because, you know, it seemed like a, you know, big one for you, just the first bare knuckle win there and finishing it in, you know, less than a minute. And it seemed like it generated a certain level of viral attention, just like the, you know, residual fist mark being left on the body and all. Like, what were some of the main takeaways from that last fight? Because it seemed like a good one on a few levels. Yeah, man, it, it happened so fast. Um, I, I really couldn't really embrace it too much because it happened so fast, like you said, under a minute. Um, I'm just blessed, man, by God, to get uh, the opportunity to do what I love to do in front of everybody and, and the people who I love. So um, it was a good one. Yeah, it got, it got some uh, some attention, some drive with it, um, leaving my knuckles on on his rib cage for like four hours afterwards. So it, it was pretty cool to, to see the, the response and how everybody thought about it and all that. So it was pretty cool, but, you know, with, with each show, you got to go back and assess and what you think you need to work on. And I see some stuff in there I need to work on in that quick little minute. So came back to the gym, cleaned it up, and then hopefully uh, we go viral on this knockout. Yeah, I would just think there would be like a world of difference in between like the two bare knuckle fights you've had, like just because of the proximity being that they were around two years apart. Like I would think there would be a tremendous amount of growth from the debut as compared to the skills in the sophomore fight you had there for bare knuckle. Yeah. The first one didn't last long. I got eye poke really bad. Um, they stopped the fight because of the eye poke. Um, completely shut my, my left eye. Um, 
it was pretty bad. I felt it was really bad. Um, so it left me without seeing for like two days um, through that eye. So it was pretty bad. But I knew when I came out to this one that I was going to make a statement. And I told everybody that these hands were certified. So I had to go out there and just show it and prove it. And that's what I did. Yeah, for sure. And I think your boxing bouts were kind of interesting, too, just because they were in the confines of a cage there, like with Global Legion FC. Like, do you think you'll be taking your boxing bouts this year under that banner again in the Quadragon, as it were? Oh, yes, for sure. Um, Goss is amazing, man. He's the owner of Global. Um, one of my really good friends, one of the guys I really look up to. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to be fighting um, and boxing for him. Um, some and. um yeah, we, we're going to see. 2023 is my year, man. I'm going to put everybody on notice and let everybody know that at 135, I'm the man. So um, I'm trying to collect be- belts, collect checks, and uh, and get paid, man. So it's all about taking care of my family, um, and, and that's the only goal. Yeah, for sure. And, I mean, I just love your approach to everything, too. Like you were talking like about how you're the best 135er in the sport and kind of looking for that gold and saying you'll be champion at some point this year. I mean, the belt is vacant after all. Like, do you foresee that coming like within the next couple fights maybe, or like what is the general timeline you perhaps foresee for, you know, becoming a champion within BYB? Yeah, man. The goal is if I finish Cody really quick, man, and put a highlight on, him, I'm trying to do it in Rock Hill, man. My, my, my town, my city where I went undefeated last year, um, in boxing in Baron Oakle. So that's in May. Um, so hopefully I finish Jenkins pretty quick, and then um, I can get that call to uh, fight whoever, whenever, and however it may. So um, I'm ready to rock and roll, man. I- I'm feeling good. Weight's feeling good. Um, I feel strong. I just got to go out there and do what I do, man. If I just do what I do and, and leave the rest to God, man, it'll come out. i come out victorious. Yeah, no, for sure. Good to approach it in that kind of way but just in kind of briefly touching on the last fight because it seemed like an important one for you being that it was you know historic and as far as it was the first bare knuckle card in south carolina history and can you kind of talk about just what that last one meant to you and some of the significant aspects for you yeah it meant a lot because south carolina um has been home to me in mma and boxing just because north carolina's been closed um for so long and uh, the commission of South Carolina, the, the the state of South Carolina, they they have embraced me, man, and I, I became really good friends and found a lot of mentors, and it's just been overall a blessing. So to be able to be on the first bare knuckle card to make history was something that I knew I needed to do, especially just not for me, but for my tribe and and for my family, just to be able to say that you know I was the first one to do it I was on that card and then just to finish it the way I finished it was was like cherry on top so it was pretty cool um it was a blessing yeah good way to look at it for sure and just even considering your history I mean I was kind of doing my research on you and you have the past of you know serving as a marine and you had a pretty significant injury and you were saying that you'd probably still be a marine if the injury never transpired and it was to a scale of having to you know spend a year and a half learning to rewalk and everything so i would think you would have not just a new lease on life in a broader sense but even with your competitive career just really appreciating the fact that you're you know still able to do this and sustain it at a high competitive level yeah it's um it's a blessing to be able to get up out my bed every morning and walk um So a lot of people take it for granted being able to walk and run. Um, I went through that stage where I had to learn how to move my toes again. Um, It was a tough stage in my life, a very dark time. But um, to be every time I compete, it's a blessing um, to be able to do what I love to do um, in front of everybody. So I never take one fight for granted. I'm humble and win. I'm humble and I'm defeated. So just because it's a blessing to be able to, to go out there and do what I love to do, um, with the circumstances that I went through. So, um, yeah, man, it's, it's pretty cool to be able to continue to fight and, um, you know, spread the name of Jesus and just to be able to tell people my story, where I came from, um, my past and, uh, my present and my future. Yeah, for sure. Have you had people like reaching out to you, like talking about, you know, being inspired by your story? I mean, I would think that, you know, a lot of the dynamics that we're outlining here would kind of inspire that, like people, you know, reaching out to you and stuff like that. Has that sort of been the case you've noticed? 
Yeah, man. A lot of people, um, a lot of strangers uh, have reached out to me, which is it's pretty humbling and amazing to hear that, you know, my story really touched them and, and helped them change their lives and stuff like that. And, and that's the ultimate goal with fighting. The ultimate goal for me is not, you know, yes, it's, it's about winning, but um, it's about just sharing my story and where I came from, my testimony and uh, where God has brought me from. Um, so my life has been tough, but, you know, with God, all things are possible. And just to be able to share that with, with the world, basically, um, it's a blessing in disguise. So I'm going to keep telling my story, and, and hopefully one day it, it turns into a book or a movie, and, and uh, we can keep sharing it. Even when I'm gone, it, uh, my story will live on. Yeah, for sure. Definitely a powerful story, for sure. And I'm kind of curious because I was seeing this in a bio that was, you know, a few years ago. I mean, it could be the case now, but just thought to ask about the training dynamics for, you know, this last camp because I was seeing that, you know, you were training at one point in like the Charlotte area, like at Art of Motion, Jiu Jitsu, and Southpaw Boxing Fitness. Are those still the primary spaces at this point, or have you maybe switched to somewhere else at this juncture? Yeah, I own, I own Ox Fitness. Um, so that's my main training gym. It's a boxing gym. Um, so that's where I train at. I own it, me and my wife. Um, so, and then I still train at Automotion Jiu Jitsu uh, for my Jiu Jitsu. I still train there. My whole family train. My three kids and my wife train there as well. So, uh, them are my two main gyms, uh, mainly Ox Fitness because we own it. And then Jiu Jitsu for my Jiu Jitsu, I go to Automotion. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, just like, in those two spaces there like it seems like a lot of great work was put in for some mma bouts too like i was seeing you actually had like a decent bit of experience across like amateur and professional mma is that something you see yourself perhaps pursuing again at some point in the future like obviously a lot of you know immediate focus on bare knuckle and everything at this point but i was seeing you had close to 30 mma fights like could you see yourself donning the small gloves again or maybe keeping it bare knuckle for the foreseeable future no, nah, all options are open. Um, you know, I don't have long left in this sport. So I've been, like you said, I've been around a long time. So fought through a lot of injuries in my pro career that I should not took fights. Um, I should have let my body rest. Um, and it, it came and uh, bit me in the butt. But, um, yeah, all options are open. The goal is to make money, um, make enough money to be able to catch myself up in, in life and um, then be able to hang it up and, you know, look back on my career and help my kids. Um, I got three little girls following right behind me in my footsteps. So um, trying to help them become champions as well um, in the same sport as me and in wrestling and jiu-jitsu and boxing. So, um, yeah, man, so I'm almost done. Soon I'm going to hang it up. But, yeah, all three still on the table. I'm going to do as many as I can, keep fighting as much as I can. And um, so when I hang it up, there's no regrets. Yeah, I mean, that's a good strategy for sure. And it seems like you're already curating a good gym culture. Like, obviously, it's important to get that, you know, high level work and grow in your skills. But I was seeing a video you posted where it was like after like a four hour shark tank workout, and you couldn't lift the arms. And it seemed like you and your wife were kind of having a bit of fun, like you were saying, you got beat up and stuff like that. So it's cool that there's that like fun, I guess, you know, communal part of it and everything like that, as well as the high level work going on. Yeah, man, we had fun at our gym. We got some, we got some, uh, some killers here um, at our gym, and some up and um, coming amateurs as well. So um, soon, people's gonna know about our gym. Um, not just me, but they're gonna know about everybody else underneath me. So uh, when I hang it up, it, it's their chance to shine. So yeah, we have fun, man. My wife's in there beating us up, and she's getting beat up as well. So it's a good time. We have fun. Um, we love what we do, man, and um, we enjoy what we do, but. At the same time, we're a team, so we, we keep it like that. But, um, yeah, man, we grow and we help each other grow. Yeah, you'll love to see it, for sure. And I guess, like, one of the questions I would have being that you're a multi-combat sport athlete. Like, there's certain bare-knuckle fighters I've talked to who kind of, like, adopt certain methods, like, say, punching the sand or using, like, the wooden Muay Thai board, like, like trying to create, like, certain micro-fractures in their hands to galvanize the hands. Like, do you have any tricks like that that you utilize or does the preparation kind of you know bear a certain resemblance across any combat sport like how does that all work for you yeah yeah like you know hitting the bag muay thai bags um bare knuckled um the sand um i use both gym tricks but mostly um i grew up fighting from where i'm from we um we grew up street fighting in the backyard a lot so 
I didn't have to really condition my hands too much because uh, we got in a, where I'm from. You have to you have to fight to survive. So um, I grew up doing it. Um, that's what I love to do. So when I got the opportunity, they told me I can do it. I said, "Let's go." Yeah, so bare knuckle was almost the first sport in a way that prepared you for everything, just honing the you know hands in the backyards, as it were. Yeah, so yeah, man, it's um, look back on it, we didn't know what the heck we was doing, <laughs> but um, back then we thought we was really fighting. So, um, but yeah, that's where I'm from. You know, it's a small little town, um, not a lot going on, so you had a lot of time to fight, and um, that's what we did. We get in the backyard and we just we just fight it out and. Um, it was it was fun when I look back on it. It, it helped me a lot to the point I am today. So I would never thought I would be a, a bare knuckle fighter. Um, so, but it's crazy how your journey can lead you to a point. I was gonna say, do you keep in touch with any of the guys from the backyard days that kind of see where you're at and what you're doing now? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Where I'm from, I'm 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 well known, um, which is a blessing. So everybody keeps up with me. I have a lot of support back home. Um, and all my guys, you know, they tell the stories about us back in the day, which is pretty cool. So we always reminisce on good times. But, um, yeah, I'm just leading the way for my people. Yeah, you love to see it for sure. And one of the last things I kind of wanted to touch on here, because I usually like to get some insights on fighter nicknames and stuff like that. And it seems like Preacher Man is the nickname, like per the IG and Twitter handles and stuff like that, but a couple of the aggregators out there kind of have a couple other nicknames for you, like Tapology says the Ox Man and Sure Dog says the Marine. So what's going on with all that? Have you had a few nicknames over the years? Or are these people kind of misinformed here? Like what's going on? Uh, my MMA was the Ox Man, um, but when I left MMA, um, I switched to the Preacher Man because I'm a preacher. Um, so what's the you know the the best name for it is the preacher man because that's what i am so um the goal is to baptize everybody in and outside the ring so um you know cody jenkins is gonna get baptized next friday night and um we'll keep it moving but yeah um i was the marine because i was in the marine corps um but uh i never really called myself that so i don't know why they got down there but um yeah the ox man was my mma nickname and then i switched it to the preacher man (laughs) Yeah, I guess it's fitting that you're, you know, fighting on Saturday, too. You can have the, you know, day of rest on Sunday and everything. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we're fighting on Friday night. So, um, next Friday night, we'll be fighting February 3rd. Uh, Saturday, I fly back in, and Sunday, I'm back in church. No matter how I look, no matter how I feel, I don't miss church. Um, so, but yeah, Friday night, get the win. Saturday, fly out. Sunday, me and my family back in church, praising God. So, it was pretty cool. Yeah, going to be a great night, February 3rd, no doubt. And, yeah, you've been great with your time, man. It's been fun getting to have you on the show and get some insights ahead of, you know, BYB 15, Broward Brawl. Seems like a great way to, you know, kick off the year and should be a fun, you know, run for you to follow, like, as well. I mean, just in talking about how active you want to be across a couple different sports, for sure. But, yeah, you know, I do want to be mindful of your time and schedule, that being said. So is there anything you might want to add as, like, a final parting thought as we're kind of wrapping up, man? Um, yeah, um, you know, I want to thank, you know, thank you for the opportunity to come on. Thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus, um, my family, my team, Ox Fitness, um, all my, uh, my sponsors, Mario, Mr. Rick, um, Gino, um, Gino is my main sponsor at Lock Clear Agency. Um, so, and then Mr. Rick and Mario is my co-sponsors. Um, so shout out to them for being on my fight shorts. Um, uh, February 3rd, stay tuned, um, buy it. BYB and Mir Mar, we're gonna put on a show and then get ready to see somebody get back to us. Yeah, it's gonna be a great fight. Cody Jenkins stepping up to take on Joshua Ox and Dean, and yeah, definitely a fun one for the 135 pound picture going forward. So yeah, looking forward to checking out this fight when it goes down. And again, to reiterate, appreciate you coming on, and yeah, you have a good rest of your day too, there, Joshua. Hey, you too, man. Hopefully, we talk right after.